So we talked in the previous episode about different categories of product owner. A scribe, who doesn't add any value, just takes orders. A proxy, who maybe doesn't just take the orders, maybe add some value in terms of assessing whether what customer the customer is asking for is really the right thing to ask for. What problem are you trying to solve? What opportunity are you trying to avail of? Trying to understand the problem that's trying to be solved instead of just taking a list of requirements like a scribe would. A business representative who is maybe, or an organization representative, someone who's more closely connected with the stakeholders within the organization to have more influence, and a sponsor who has the money, and then CEO of the product. Most product owners in the world are scribes, are proxies, some of them are also business representatives. All three of those lack in power, although a business representative would have more influence. So what do you do? You could become a developer on a team, because in Scrum, for example, there's only one product owner for the product, for a real product. Something that an external customer end user will recognize that they pay for with their time, their money, or their data. Somebody consumes it and somebody produces it. In the case of a real product, there's only one product owner. So if you are a team level product owner within a multi-team product, one thing you can do is become a developer. Another thing you could do is take a little tip from Large Scale Scrum, Less, where they have this concept of a product owner helper. We need to do some work on the title because it's not very appealing. The idea is that you might be able to help the product owner across the product so that if all the value is on Vanessa's team, but you were previously on your own team looking at your filter the backlog, working on really low value work because that's what your team did, instead of learning what was most valuable for the product, what was most valuable for the organization. If you act as a helper across the product, supporting the product owner, that at least reduces the damage and it means we still have one product owner, the product owner is getting some assistance, and you've got a view of what's happening across the entire product. Another coping tactic that I tried a few years ago that was really successful was a Speak Now or Forever Keep Your Silence meeting, is what I called it, Speak Now and Forever Keep Your Silence. So it was a situation where the product owner was a proxy. So the first thing I did was I asked for the product owner to be seconded over to the business. Now this is in a situation where there was IT and business. You could also have it between supplier and organization, for example. So we asked the product owner to be part of the organization, the, the main organization in terms of where decisions get made and so on. So that already helped, but the person still didn't have, didn't have power. So the second thing we did, we, did was we arranged a speak now or forever keep your silence meeting. We didn't call it that, we had a better name than that. But essentially the stakeholders were invited to this meeting and the product owner with no power said, this is what I'm planning to prioritize in the next sprint speak now or forever keep your silence. In other words, let's debate now if you disagree with these decisions. Do not pull the rug from under me during the sprint saying you disagree with these decisions because as soon as the developers and the team realize that actually I don't have the right priorities as a proxy, then they'll just make up their own priorities and then we're all losing. So uh, the coping tactic would be have a speak now forever, keep your silence meeting, have the raging debate within that session, and if the list change, that's fine, but at least you come out with a list that has been agreed with all of the stakeholders, or agreed with as many as possible, because some stakeholders you can't agree with, sometimes we need to say no, but you do your best to come up with the best set of priorities, and even though you don't have power, you just bought power for a couple of weeks, because you had a session where you asked people what the right order was, what the right list was, what the right sequence was, and you came up with the best possible list. That's a little coping tactic. Maybe you should give it a go. Thank you.